Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows user modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Peace Finicism on the Voluntary Virtues Network on theseedsofliberty.com and theconsciousresistance.com. So peaceful anarchism is covered by the BIPCOT No Government License. This allows reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information for this at BIPCOT.org. So today we are pleased to have a returning guest, Alma Summer, who's... Um, coming in from South Padre Island, Texas, on her way to Acapulco for Anarchopulco, so exciting, wish I could go, um, <laughs> and uh, we're going to be talking about BitNation Borderless Tour and uh, and Sailing Bangarang, which is her new channel, her new Facebook page, and, uh, and what's going on with uh, Anarchopulco. So um, Alma, thanks a lot for coming back on the show. Thanks for having me. No problem. So, um, so yeah, what's new with you since the last time I talked to you was like I think a year ago or something. So what's what's been well, we, uh, what's been up? We had another kid. Oh yeah, that's right. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> that's always good. <laughs> Creating more uh, anarchists and volunteers in the world. I love it. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we had Tate here in Texas um, at a hospital called Ben Taub. Um, I actually had a midwife and attempted to have another home birth. And after a certain amount of time in my water breaking, uh, we ended up going to the hospital and I had her there and she was actually a VBAC. So that was pretty cool. Awesome. And, um, they have like one of the lowest cesarean rates at the hospital. So that's why I chose them as my backup. Mm. Um, and yeah, so then we had her and then a hurricane hit. And the whole time we were here in Texas, the reason we came here was to look for a sailboat. So we we did end up finding a sailboat and uh, we got a sweet deal. And I, I don't really have to go into the whole story unless you really want me to. But I was on uh, Freedom's Phoenix or Declare Your Independence with Ernest Hancock recently. Ah. And I do talk about the whole story, um, selling the RV and... And getting a sale, but we sold the RV. I'll just give you the short story. We sold the RV for Bitcoin and got a loan from my grandpa um, at the same time, held on to the Bitcoin. It went on a crazy roller coaster, uh, very high up in value. So we were able to buy things we needed for the sailboat, like uh, navigation equipment and refrigeration for the icebox and safety equipment and things like that, like really important things that you need to have for like a live aboard boat situation. Um, so, and then I've been paying my grandpa back every month since then. And he's almost, he's almost paid off and we still have some crypto left over. So it ended up working out, uh, to benefit our family very much mm -hmm. being on the crypto bandwagon. And nice. we're happy about that. So, um, we've, felt a lot safer in the boat and the way it's set up now but we are going to be leaving the boat here in uh on south padre island for the time that we go into mexico for uh the anarcho poco event uh, we actually are crossing tomorrow morning we're going to take a uber uh from south padre island to matamoros and then we're going to get on a bus in Matamoros and take that to Acapulco. And it's only like, uh, I think, uh, well, I'm not actually sure about the time on the bus. It's a little bit longer, I think. Maybe they stop somewhere. But, yeah, we'll be there in a couple of days. Cool. Uh, so let me. I forgot to mention your links, um, tse.bitnation.co and uh, in our Facebook page, Sailing Bangarang. So uh, check those out if you want to see what Alma's up to. Um, but uh, but yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, our goal is to basically not have any interaction um, crossing the border, and that's 
that's just ba- that's basically our, our main goal. And and if we do have an interaction to videotape it and um, as much as they let us, I suppose. Um, but I don't think going in, into Mexico will have any issues. It will really probably be coming back into the U.S. because uh, Brian and I have both have expired passports and uh, the children have uh, the birth certificates that the hospitals give you, the hard copy, but they don't have vital record documents like signed uh, birth certificates. Mm. Um, so they, they don't have like official government document documented birth certificates. But I know they won't care about the baby and most likely they'll just like give us a really hard time about Neo and then they'll they'll scold us for not having a uh, current uh, tags. <laughs> hmm. Right. So, uh, so we're like, either way, we know we're just going to kind of have a hassle c- coming back. But, and if, and if we do, maybe we'll just take a boat because we can actually go to, uh, Playa Baghdad, which is 20 miles South of, uh, the border here. And well, like the Rio Grande is the actual border and that's about six miles South of where we are. And then Playa Baghdad is the next little town, but they don't, don't have a marina or anything that you can pull your boat into for like 50 nautical miles. So um, it's like a whole day's trip for us at seven knots, you know, sailing or motoring mm-hmm. to get, you know, where we need to go. And they don't dredge. They don't have an ICW like the uh, U.S. has the intercoastal waterway. And so you can stay kind of like inland and go all the way. I think it goes to like New York. It's like the whole country, basically. Mm-hmm. And so you can stay safe out of the Gulf because the Gulf is intense. It can be really, really intense. And so you can't really rely on anchoring out in the Gulf unless the conditions are like supreme conditions and there's no storms or mm. even just crazy wind or anything coming um, so we've learned a lot since we left Houston. We've been sailing from Houston to where we are now, uh, Port Isabel or, uh, South Padre Island. So that's the area that the border is at. And, uh, there's a couple, you can go to Brownsville and, and cross in a car to Matamoros. And there's like three different border crossings in that town alone. Um, and they're all set up exactly the same. And if you look at Google Maps, you can see people coming back into the U.S. have to wait in this huge line, whereas there's no hmm. wait to get into Mexico. It, to me, that just shows you like which country has more restrictions and which country doesn't. You yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Wow, so it's a big shift for you guys going from uh, land to the water. Um, wow. Oh yeah, we've. <laughs> It's taken us about two months to move out of the RV, and the RV has now been delivered back to Arizona to its its new owner. So, um, yeah, that was fun, actually. It was – we sort of like last minute, right, when we were done moving out of the RV, found a friend uh, uh, who was willing to um, deliver the RV to Arizona for us. And so he, uh, he was compensated, and he – made the trip and brian didn't have to make it and like leave us for five days so it was pretty cool it it was really nice so so what kinds of uh like what do you call those banners you had in your rv like the dash banner thing do you have stuff like that on your on your boat like this is no we don't have anything go ahead (laughs) sorry well if anything we'll just put up like a big bit nation flag or or something but what we do plan to document the boat on the blockchain and we'll um notarize or we can, what we can do now currently is notarize the bill of sale um, through BitNation. BitNation has a public notary that's free. And mm-hmm. I know they still have it up, but I don't know how much longer they're going to keep it up. I wish they'd keep it up forever. But since they're building Pangea, which is basically like an app on your phone that uh, you'll be able to do transactions. They'll have their wallet. Uh, they're going to have their own token, the PAT token, the Pangea arbitration token. Hmm. And that's what they're in the process of promoting right now is uh, the public sale, which will be start starting March 25th. So they had their pre-sale already and they'll be announcing the public sale um, at uh, CryptoPoco actually. So, uh, and the whole BitNation team, like the core team is going to be there and we'll be hosting our own event, BitNation Poco, 
on the Monday after Crypto Poco, and uh, there's going to be free mimosas. So if you are going to be in Mexico in Anarcho Poco or Acapulco or whatever you want to call it, Anarcho Forco too, we can talk about that if you want, uh, you know, definitely come and check out BitNation and what BitNation is doing because – I believe in the future when there's like a natural disaster, like a hurricane or something that strikes an island, that we can pre-install Pangea on these apps, or I'm sorry, on these devices, this app on the device, and now people will be able to communicate using the mesh network instead of having to wait in a government line to let someone know they're safe. Mm -hmm. And not only will they be able to communicate instantly, they'll be able to, you know, let others know if they, what they need. So they need water, food or what, you know, whatever the devastation was to them, they can let let the whole community know like instantly instead of having to go to an area of the island if they can even get there and, um, you know, wait in line somewhere for help. So, yeah, Pangea offers um, some really awesome things for the future. And Split Nation's, you know, also working on. Uh, like BitNation passports for BitNation citizens and things like that. And they want to, you know, they know nation states exist right now. Now, what they're doing, obviously, is creating a a new model that will make the old model obsolete, which is nation states. So Mm. there's kind of like an in-between process like there was when I woke up, you know, becoming... Uh, I guess you could say a libertarian to an anarchist, but it was like a really quick transition for me. So I would actually say like Ron Paul kind of like tricked me back into uh, statism for a minute. And then I like really woke up and was like, no, this isn't going to work. So Hmm. uh, (laughs) it's time for the next idea. So this Bit Nation is that your? Uh, did you guys found this, or is 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 that is that, is that related to um, what Suzanne Tarkowski Temple Huff is doing? Yes, that is her project. That's her Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. 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 So yeah, awesome. Yeah. So so you guys are so so. What's your affiliation with with Bit Nation? Like, what's your what's so your I role do, I do social networking for Bit Nation. So you can find me on the BitNation page or in the Telegram. Uh, we're actually building a Telegram channel right now, and we'll probably hit 1,000 members in maybe the next couple of weeks, I think, because it's grown very quickly since we've created it. So um, that's pretty exciting. Oh, and also we're looking into bounty programs. We already offer bounties right now for ambassadors and people that host meetups and also translations for the different publications that come out. Um, but, uh, we're also looking into diff- a, a, an extended bounty program. So that other crypto anarchists can participate, you know, if they have a standing in social networking or either Bitcoin talk forum, Uh, People that participate in bounties will know exactly what I'm talking about. A lot of this is all new to me because I've never worked on a token sale event before or an ICO. And so I've learned a lot probably (laughs) since the last time we've talked. (laughs) Yeah, 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 you you sound very involved in the uh, the crypto world, which is awesome. Um, I'm not so much. And that's so cool that you guys have benefited from the rise in uh, in Bitcoin value, that's so awesome. My uh, my wife has been beating me over the head. <laughs> the highest, the higher that's been going, but uh, but it, but it came down since then. And uh, I mean, um, yeah. <laughs> like, Someone, Suzanne, actually suggested that if you can afford to do this, to um, invest five hundred dollars a month in Monero, and in ten years you'll be like a 10 millionaire or something like that she said i can't remember what the numbers were exactly but i was like well how about a hundred dollars and i'm looking at like if i do that mm. i haven't yet but if i do that then i'm looking at least a millionaire <laughs> mm. well, that's, that's comfortable well d- d- depends on how i mean how much the dollar's worth i guess at that time a million might not be worth so much if the fed keeps printing and borrowing and you know <laughs> so that that won't matter what will matter is that i can take one bitcoin and buy a yacht that's what right right well yeah it depends on what it can buy <laughs> yeah yeah so th- this, is the, this is the interesting thing about cryptocurrencies it's always measured against u.s dollars right and which people consider to be stable when in fact 
you know, it's the dollar that can be printed uh, unlimited and, and ad infinitum. And, <laughs> you know, it's the crypto world and the, and the cryptocurrencies and the and precious metals that are that are scarce. And, you know, that cannot I be. Would, Go ahead. I would I would kind of say that it's measured in value in dollars just so people know its value, but yeah. not necessarily that it's based off of how crappy the value of the dollar is. Mm -hmm. So it is its buying power that is what measures its value. Yeah, and 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 people get excited um, you know, when it when it goes up and uh and really I think what what that signifies is is how terribly the US dollar is doing. <laughs> people don't necessarily don't necessarily realize that also I think uh so it's largely dependent on on uh, on US currency and and how you know how much is being printed and and circulating and all that so <laughs> I think its value also goes up based on the technology alone I don't know if you've read Bit Bitcoin's white paper but yeah. I think and I've kind of come up with this theory on my own I call it the Pac-Man theory and mm. I haven't I, I'm still trying to explain it properly so <laughs> maybe bear with me but basically because its value continues to go up, it uses more Federal Reserve notes to buy in. Mm. Now, when you buy in, someone is selling their Bitcoin, but they're selling it to another Bitcoin wallet. So even though the Federal Reserve notes are buying it, the participation in Bitcoin is only going up by creating more wallets each time there's a transaction. Mm -hmm. So I think that that in itself has to do with um, its value and and when it goes up so high, it could be a higher level of participation, like maybe a bunch of wallets are being created at that time for some reason. Whatever the reason is, it's hard to know exactly in a global market, you know, and a lot of people will say the Asian markets have a lot to play on it, which I don't even know what that means. It just goes like completely over my head. Like, I don't even know what <laughs> like what crypto businesses Asian markets have uh -huh. and why that would affect it, you know, uh -huh. and to even keep up with the amount of crypto businesses that exist is impossible at this point. So. Like, I think it's funny when I hear people say the crypto market is business market is so small. And I'm like, no, dude, as like an eight year activist, I've been helping personally help brick and mortar businesses accept Bitcoin. And I'm just one of thousands of activists that have been doing this. And so not only are brick and mortar businesses accepting it, but peer to peer people are accepting it. And they're accepting not just Bitcoin, they're accepting many different currencies and so it's just so extensive that anyone with a narrow mind uh, or narrow-minded thought about cryptocurrency is just not educated enough or hasn't been using it long enough and just there's still people that be like you know i can't buy anything with it and i'm like i've been buying groceries and you know other things with it for a long time and not only that but i never have to go on a website to sell my crypto i have plenty of friends that want to buy my crypto at this point i've got a list and there's like people who want your list of people <laughs> who <laughs> buy your crypto <laughs> so so when you buy stuff with with crypto you don't you don't have to exchange it for usd you just use directly the the, the crypto to buy stuff okay so you can work really hard and you can do it with just spending crypto but sometimes we do like, like we make things easier for ourselves and we'll sell crypto to one of our friends. So like I said, the Bitcoin's never actually leaving to turn into FRNs. You know, mm -hmm. I'm getting FRNs in my PayPal or whatever I use, um, but there's still a wallet that that Bitcoin is going to when I sell it. So, you know, it's just like, that's why I call it the Pac-Man theory. I think that Bitcoin is literally going to eat FRNs because its value continues to rise. People buy in and they don't actually leave, even though I'm selling it. I'm selling it to another wallet. So mm -hmm. it it stays in Bitcoin. And, and, and the FRNs just get eaten up. <laughs> and, and so, <laughs> and what do you, uh, I'm just curious because, 
Um, I know different people have different ideas on where to keep it. Like, do you store it on your phone? you store it on the laptop? Um, I'm pretty sure you don't use an exchange to store it because that's, that's risky, right? No, I don't store yeah. in an exchange. Yeah. Oh, man. I yeah. have, I, I, I'll never forget the $40 I had in BTCE, you know, and that one was the last one that I had anything in that went down. And, mm -hmm. and I'm still sad about that because that was seized by the government. So my question is, is how much Bitcoin does the government need to own until people are like, okay, I'm out of Bitcoin. Because hmm. if they do own a certain percentage of it, then I, mean, I just don't know if they can because then they auction it off and then you really don't know who owns it because hmm. it could be anybody at that point. They just sell it. You know, when state when the state gains assets, they sell them to earn other assets like yeah. cars when they take cars and stuff like that. It's the same thing. So, Oh, you mean the, the civil asset forfeiture type thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this marina we stayed at for a little bit last night had a Homeland Security office there that they had imminent domain, the marina. When we asked them if they had shower facilities, the guy was like, no, nope. Homeland Security came in and they took over that building. And the marina that we're at now has border patrol and they're like literally across the dock from us. And we've been watching them all day go out on their, 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 oh, what do they call them? Um, um, Oh, I forget what they call them. Not skills or practices. Drill, not drills. There was another name that Brian used for it. And, and it's just like training, training. What are you training for? Like, mm -hmm. what, what is your training? You, they're training to park a boat and learn how to park a boat and drive a boat and do all this weird stuff. Like they had one <laughs> of the guys like pulling into all the, all the boat slips and in and out and like parking the boat. Like they have to learn how to do that stuff if they're going to be out there like harassing people right. and at one point one of them actually came over to the boat and brian was pulling up on the dinghy and he's like you coming over here to harass me he says to the guy <laughs> and, and the guys I'm like oh my god no he just wants to talk about the sailboat or be nosy or i don't know like clone our phones within a certain distance i have all i don't know hmm. i go just don't just don't come in until he's gone <laughs> right, right. wow that's that's, that's nerve-wracking so constantly border border patrol is constantly nearby that's well and if people stand in a certain area on the dock they can see like right inside your boat and it's just kind of like dude you work for the queen yeah. and he even made a comment to brian about how he's married to his job like <laughs> makes me sick to my stomach <laughs> seriously <laughs> there's so many better things to do with your life than work for the government oh man <laughs> I, I remember talking to a person who uh who like he went to a, um, a high school reunion uh and uh and he was talking to some of the people and and the people who were like bullies in high school um, ended up being like border patrol and <laughs> and police officers <laughs> type people. So it's interesting how those kinds of positions of authority attract a certain type of personality, you know, that likes to dominate other people and, you know, harass other people. And that's exactly what I tell my kids whenever we see a, a police. I'm like, okay, kids, another road pirate harassing somebody, you know, on the side of the road. Like <laughs> they pull somebody over and like, oh, poor... Poor, poor guy, peaceful person being harassed by another road pirate. And like that's that's what you want people to think of you is like when I walk over there, they think I'm gonna harass them. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I mean, I don't. Know. I guess they enjoy striking fear into people. You know, um, I don't know what kind of a person you have to be to uh, like a job like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I guess people do it and they're like, well, it's my job. You know, I. Uh, harass people there's <laughs> yeah there's so many things that it could be related to i mean it could be related to early drug use or something i don't know right. maybe there's like or some kind of uh, vaccination that they got or just joining the military you know and then you want to find camaraderie when you get out and that's how you find camaraderie and uh, yeah, the Coast Guard has a really big office here, too, you know, and that's just like a whole nother organization. There's so many of them, the Coast Guard, Border Patrol, you know, and then there's just other other people. We yeah, we we've actually been completely left alone and uh, it's been really nice. And, you know, it's it's nice uh, not having to drive on a road and 
that when you hit a wave, sometimes you feel like you're on a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I did get seasick for the first time ever. I've never gotten seasick on a boat. And we decided to go out into the Gulf from Freeport to Matagorda. And it basically kicked our ass and or kicked my ass. Brian was a champion and just rode the waves. Like it was basically like sailing or sorry, like uh, surfing your you know surfboard but your boat on these waves it was intense and it was cold it's been cold we've been trying to escape the the cold weather so much so we're uh we're a little late but we're getting there oh my god it's been freezing up here i'm in i'm in new jersey and uh you know the weather has been down in the single digits and the minus you know wind chill factor in the minus degrees and uh and apparently it's it hasn't been this cold for like a century around here (laughs) Which, uh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, we had you know frozen pipes and burst pipes, and you know water wasn't flowing in the faucets, and uh, you know all kinds of fun stuff. And l- luckily, I've been chopping wood, so we've been making fire, um, and that's been really nice. So, but yeah, expensive energy, heating bills, and makes my wife makes my wife want to move to like a you know warmer states down south. So, go to Arizona. There's so many, you know activists in arizona arizona is a huge hub or texas both austin and houston have huge hubs really mm. oh yeah yeah we're thinking about yeah we're, yeah we're, we're, yeah she's seriously thinking about it. ever since that that cold spell terrible terrible cold spell um yeah i mean so many people's pipes around here were frozen and oh that's that's just rough um but that sounds horrible i think humans are supposed to be uh nomadic i don't think they're supposed to stay in one place it's kind of like a a new idea in the last few hundred years i think <laughs> well actually we, we we've been we've been moving like since what was it 2014 we moved from long island then we moved back to you know, you know rockland county where i grew up in new york and then we moved from stayed there for a few years and now we moved here and we're renting here thank goodness because so many things broke and and we're just renting so you know we could just pick up and go so that's nice i uh, really happy about that um you know renting uh, offers a very good amount of freedom for us so. <laughs> we went on the road before we even had a new house and we left our apartment and we went and stayed up in concho on a friend's property in his, his trailer and we stayed there until we got the winnebago the neighbors owned the winnebago and we were in the trailer and we just stared at the winnebago and, until we 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 figured out how we could get the winnebago so uh yeah yeah, it's cool. So, so yeah, talk about a little bit about um, Anarcopulco and uh, and what do you plan to do? What do you plan to attend? And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, so I'm, je- I will... I'm extremely jealous. By the way, I would love to go. So many people I know are going. Um, but yeah, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> well, you can go. You can escape to the warmer weather, and you can escape to Anarcopulco. <laughs> um, it is your choice. And you can up and leave now that I know you can up and leave. You can up and leave whenever you want. Um, and you can, you could probably, I don't know what you're doing for work, but you could probably start doing this for work if you're not already doing, you know, your show for work. But uh, you, sh- you might be at the point where you could probably switch over. Um, if you live in Mexico, you can probably afford to live and do that, definitely. And, uh, um, so we're going to be there in a couple of days and I will be attending the events. You'll see me around. Uh, I'll be at crypto Poco hanging out and handing out flyers for bit nation Poco, which will be Monday at 4 PM. Um, and it has a, uh, its own venue. So you'll have to go on the Facebook event page to find out the information for the venue. And, Come see us because we're gonna have free mimosas. See, if if if, if it wasn't for anything else, just get the mimosas. <laughs> awesome, yeah. I mean, uh, God, God, so many so many awesome speakers going, and and apparently it's gonna be like twice the size of last year. And um, I mean, performances by some awesome um, anarchist rappers. You know, um, what, what's his name? Um, Veracity. Uh, Eric uh, Eric July and I don't know is um who else is who else is going to oh is it the other rapper um uh, Elias Anias Clay is that her name You know I think I'm this might be out of my uh <laughs> out of my 
my knowledge zone. I haven't your, been <laughs> your, your your realm of expertise. <laughs> my my favorite rapper is uh, is Ty Daniels, uh, the profound poet, and he's a uh, libertarian anarchist that raps and lives in Arizona, and uh, he's a good friend of mine. So cool. check him out. <laughs> Ty Ty Daniels, never heard of him. Um, also Brent Elias, you familiar with Blooded the Brave? Um, I interviewed him a couple times. Uh, he's a pretty cool rapper. Um, and uh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, if you know any artists who want to perform on stage, to invite them to Jackalope Freedom Festival, which is July 31st through August 6, 2018, and it's free to camp, vend, and attend, and get your band on stage. And uh, and, and how big is the pile of papers to they, they have to register for? <laughs> No papers. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, okay, July. Yeah, definitely uh, let people know. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, Brent. I, I know, I know, Blood the Brave. He's been having some some health issues lately, but um, yeah, hopefully, he can go out. Um, he's, he's been doing some cool stuff, uh, promoting his stuff on Facebook and making singles and albums and yeah. So awesome, awesome stuff. You're going to be a jackalope, right? Because it's free. It's the only free anarchist event that exists, you know. So it, it's is it, definitely is like it the, add is it, it on. Is it the only free one, really? Do you know another free one? Awesome. Wow. I had no idea. You're right. I don't know any other free ones. Oh, man. I know. I mean, uh, I, I, I mean, the cost is another thing with, with Anarchapulco, but um, um, I mean, just getting down there and I would love to go, but my, my family would want to go, but, you know, that would be tough. Um, so, so, so let me ask you, would you, would you, um, what's stopping you guys from moving to Mexico? We're nomadic. We aren't, we aren't going to stay in any one place unless, okay. So there is, uh, this place we really love the Virgin Islands that we went to in 2011 and 2012. And I got scuba certified there and sailed for the first time. And um, so we, we, I also studied the island very extensively before we left. And I even created my own uh, map with all the dive sites and stuff. Um, I'll eventually put it on the internet and um, sell it for a price, but I haven't done that yet. But it's totally worth it because it has a lot of information on it that I gathered from many, many different sources. Uh, so people going to that island specifically would be very interested in it. Um, and I found out a while ago that the library on St. John was closed. It, they closed it. They had limited the days it was open to like three days a week. And then they ended up closing it. And so I wrote the lady who runs the... Um, it's like she runs the history museums and the libraries. And I told her a little bit about us. And I told her I was interested in in opening the library as a collaborative workspace, like slash community center. And she sent me a link to uh, the application, which tells you that you need to have a master of science and libraries degree to even apply for the job. And I'm like, this is <laughs> so <funny>. stupid. <laughs> she didn't even say anything real to me. She just wrote me back and linked me to the that. And so I was thinking that maybe I would like write the governor who lives in St. Croix, who's like that island is, a, it's really far away and it's very far south. And St. Thomas and St. John are right next to each other. And but then I was like, I don't know. I'm not sure what kind of reaction I get. But since I've been working with BitNation, I've um, met a bunch of BitNation citizens that live in Puerto Rico. And now recently I found some in St. Croix. So I think that I'm going to do a live hangout on the bit nation pangea pirates uh youtube channel uh with them and just have like a collaborative meeting and make it public just so people uh can find us and know that we're we're talking about this because like after the hurricanes there's so many people that even pangea now would still benefit like they're still in such devastation that 
having Pangea would just allow these people to move forward that much quicker. So, so what's the difference? Um, I, mean, I mean, aren't there other are there other apps that are like that, like that um, people can communicate in emergency situations? Uh, like, is four one one cell four one one is that similar to that? Is that what's the difference with those two? Yeah, four one one. You can create groups and um, you can announce if something is happening to you. And Facebook even has its own service as well that they they had up during the hurricanes, the marked safe yeah. service. Right, right. And if you actually click into that, you can see the map and there's a map with different color dots. And some of them are offering help and some of them are people that need help. Mm. And so software like that is, I think uh, pretty easy to recreate at this point. So like an, any kind of app could kind of include that. And what pay, Pangea uses the term dApps, so you'll be able to uh, create dApps that work on top of Pangea. But Pangea will also be used to create smart contracts, and when a smart contract is fulfilled, you can earn reputation in the marketplace. So um, when another person is looking to do uh, business with you, you'll have this reputation. So some of the PAD tokens are actually allocated towards reputation and building reputation in the marketplace. Not all of them are being sold. So um, it's going to be pretty interesting to see. And, and not only that, but you can create your own nation. So at this point, you know, if there's a group of people in Puerto Rico that have been devastated, but they have access to Pangea, they could literally create <clears throat> their own nation offering alternative governance services to help people get on their own feet that are not controlled by the government and fiat currency. So people will be able to help themselves that much faster and uh, more efficiently. And then they, that will help them realize how unnecessary and irrelevant the state is. Uh, <laughs> and so, and so they, they, you know, in order for the state to you know, become obsolete and disappear. They don't necessarily have to be anarchists or volunteers. They just have to understand that, oh, I don't even need to stay for this. Like, we can solve our own problems. And uh, and I think that's one of the best ways, you know, to render the state obsolete is, uh, you know, these people, they don't even understand what, you know, non-aggression principle and, and, uh, and you know, self-ownership and property rights are. They just understand, we don't need it, <laughs> you know? Uh, is it, yeah, yeah, I definitely think... I definitely think the tides have turned and things are much different now. And even though there are people still living in the government paradigm, like public school and uh, slave jobs and the six o'clock news, and they have this little bubble that is around them, there's other people that have been living off the grid, not giving their children to the government for since it's all existed. So it goes both ways and both options are there for people. You are free to choose what you want to do with your life and how you want to live your life and if you want to pay taxes or not. You are free to choose those things. So it's just a matter of when are you going to make that choice and what choices are you going to make to get you there. Yeah, yeah, and and the more the more options that we can give to people, like you know, you going to businesses and uh, explaining uh, cryptocurrency and saying, you know, you don't need to just accept credit credit card and uh, and Federal Reserve notes. You can accept this other currency, and uh, you know, ho ho hopefully it's cheaper to use. Uh, um, I've been hearing that Bitcoin is getting more expensive to use, and there's other um, alternatives popping up, right? Or there's or there's some um, improvements to the um, to the blockchain, right? That they that you know, to solve this problem and, and it's in, in, in the uh, tra transaction time is slowing down. Right. Um, so, so yeah, I guess those things have to be ironed out, but, um, you know, for the most part, it was I like that though, for a couple months, a couple months ago, it was like that. I mean, there were, they wanted to charge like $20, uh, standard transaction fees and they're not like that anymore. I just did a Bitcoin transaction the other day for 30 cents. Oh, Okay. Cool. A, stand, a standard trans transaction fee, and it went through right away. Cool. See, I'm not I'm not up to date with the Bitcoin stuff, <laughs> but uh, all right, I'm cool. not sure what happened. I can't tell you that, but uh, um, I know that it seems to have adjusted. 
Yeah, yeah, no, there was like this um, debate between like Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin. Yeah, I don't know, regular Bitcoin. Do you do you understand what happened there? And, and people were preferring one over the other. And you know. I know a little bit about about Bitcoin Cash. I know that um, there are people that are huge supporters of it that were huge supporters of Bitcoin and now they're not. Mm. And I also read the document that Rick Falknage wrote regarding um, Bitcoin cash and how they come to uh, decision, decision making. And it was very interesting and they highly uh, promote like positive uh, behavior and positive ideas. And even if, someone has like a bad idea they don't like focus on that by any means so they kind of just move on to the next better idea sort of but that's like a really vague way of explaining his paper and i highly suggest anyone who wants to learn more about bitcoin cash to go read the paper that rick falkman wrote and he's the creator of the pirate party so i'm really looking forward to meeting him and he's also an advisor of um at bit nation so uh, I'm. I want to meet this guy. I'm excited. Cool. Yeah, he's. Uh, w- what is he in? Um, is it Sweden or or Switzerland or Nor- or one of those countries, Scandinavian countries? Oh or? man, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure at all. But yeah, uh, the Pirate Party. I think you were right, uh, Sweden. But yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, and and what do you and uh, what do you think about um, Vitjadlika and the uh, what's it called? Bit, what's it called? Um, what's it called? Liberland. Lib- Liberland. Yeah. Lib- Lib- Liberland. I think that's awesome. I, I love what they're doing. And I found out that you can. Uh, I I can't. I don't know if I'm going to pronounce the river name, the Dunab or Dunab River. River. Mm-hmm. You can actually take that river all the way to where their land is. In a sailboat, so I think I might look into that. Ah. And, and you can also document you can document your boat um, through Liberland. They have like a really extensive, uh, put together format on their website, mm-hmm. and you can document your boat with Liberland. And so I think we're going to do that as well as the notarize uh, the bill of sale with BitNation. So, so you guys are going to go across the ocean? eventually so wow <laughs> well i know i'm kind of all over the place but we have lots of non-plans i guess you could say and <laughs> if we do end up going uh towards the caribbean and i can convince the government to give the library back to a private individual not like a, a hundred year lease type of thing but actually give it back because the library was donated to the government to begin with like a lot of buildings and mm. and <clears throat> like a lot of buildings are and so i'm thinking since it's closed and they can no longer operate it under their own uh, situation whatever that might be and maybe the government clo- maybe the government shut down for real like i know that they shut down a while ago and then they shut down again recently but like i'm <laughs> i'm done like they, as far as i'm concerned they shut down and they're over like i don't know where and and bitcoin's eating the federal reserve notes so like yeah. they're so done <laughs> <laughs> Oh, government shutdown. That's so that's so funny. I mean, <laughs> the idea the idea the government is threatening to shut down. Ah, oh, and that's and that's supposed to strike fear into people. It's it's amazing how deep the um indoctrination goes when when people fear something like that. Oh no, the world's coming to an end, you know. We won't be robbed anymore. We won't be controlled and <laughs> monitor that's what i think is so funny i don't think anyone is afraid of that like i guess maybe people getting government checks might be afraid of that but that's just like the mm. the older generation the younger generation's just struggling to like pay their rent <laughs> actually did, did, did they still collect like uh income tax and uh you know social security and uh medicare medicaid from people's income when the government shut down, because because if they if they stop that, people would probably be so excited that they'd be like, continue with the shutdown. <laughs> I know. Do they stop stealing money when they shut down? That's a good question. Then the six o'clock news should be asking that, right? <laughs> they probably, uh, I don't know. The the politicians probably just stopped going into uh, into their you know 
political buildings. Uh, but they still probably get paid, but they just stop going. They're like, we're shut down, but we still want to get paid. <laughs> oh, yeah. The buildings closed. Like, so they turn off the lights and save electricity, but still <laughs> line their pockets. <laughs> Isn't it a nice gig? You know, everyone else has to be productive and industrious and save for the future. And, and they just have to take taxpayer money and pass laws to restrict people's freedoms wow what a job man and you get paid for that damn it <laughs> oh and people think, think and people think you're necessary that, that's the other thing right <laughs> go ahead yeah i read atlas shrugged in 2003 when i was in the military i got i got injured in basic and spent three months in in ptrp which was a physical therapy program and while i was there i finished reading atlas shrugged and i was like Fuck this shit. <laughs> <laughs> so was was Atlas Shrugged your your like uh, your entrance into libertarian ideas? Well, my dad has been a libertarian his whole life, but he didn't raise me. My mom did, and she raised oh. me Mormon. So I was actually like very religiously oppressed, and Mormon. so I was I was a rebel like my whole younger life. I I just you know did things and you know without telling my parents and <laughs> and uh i just made my own decisions like every other teenager does and and so they were definitely decisions like my mom would not have been happy with i'm sure so um but you know that also led me to find who i am as a person and what i want in my life and so I don't know, but my, you know, my dad's been awake, but he was in Santa Cruz my whole life. And I had a stepdad uh, for 18 years and he was pretty cool. So I don't know. I actually worked for the city of Scottsdale as a, a youth leader. And then I worked for them as a rec leader. And then I worked, uh, well, sorry, before that I worked as a lifeguard and then as a rec leader. So for three years or longer, I basically worked for the city of Scottsdale and I didn't quit until uh 2000 2000 and then in 2003 i joined the military and so but i was only in for four months and then i got out and after that um and i had already gone to itt i graduated from itt right before i went to the military so i had a degree and i got a job uh designing cell towers uh really? for a living wow yeah and i did i did that for seven years my first job was in furniture and then I went into cell towers and did that for seven years. And, but for the last three years I was doing that job, I was awake and I was, was like, I hate being a slave. I was miserable. I was angry. I came home every day and I was like, this sucks. But I was making so much money. I didn't know how to live differently mm. because I had all these bills like rent and just the way, the things I bought and mm -hmm. spending money the way I spent it. And so it took a, a while to like, you know, like you almost have to like, it just depends on what kind of situation you're in. Like, have you owned your own businesses and you did, you make a lot of money from them and you have a little bit of money already. But if you weren't like that and you live job to job and, and paycheck to paycheck, then you almost have to take a step back and try and make, or try and spend less money so that you don't require to make a lot of money so that you can get out of the situation so, like, I needed to get out of the apartment, you know, I needed to stop paying for the apartment. And so we had to find another place to go, but we didn't have a house. So it was like pretty difficult. We actually went on the road and we toured for a little bit and we came to Texas and I spoke at the Texas Bitcoin conference. And I think this was in 2014. So it was like right after Neo was born. Hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, wow, I, I I can't imagine you in the military, man. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Uh, me, me, me either. <laughs> <laughs> taking taking orders from somebody? No, I can't imagine Alma taking anybody <laughs> taking orders from anybody. Um, oh man, <laughs> I I actually got an Article 15 while I was there for drinking with the Marines on pass one day. But there's so much more shenanigans that I like didn't get caught doing. It's hilarious the stories that I could tell you in a different episode, I'm sure. And, and it's great that, so. that, that you. I assume you got out before 9/11 happened, right? R right before. Uh, yes. Well, it was 2003. Oh, 2003. You got out. That I went. That I went in. 
Oh, that you went in. Oh, I see. I thought it was okay. Okay. So I, yeah, I know. I would have went to Iraq for sure because there was. I I went in. And I got uh, counterintelligence, so that was going to be my job. Because I was like, if I'm going to go into the military, mm-hmm. I'm going to find out what the hell is going on. <clears throat> so, and they kind of stick you in basic with uh, people of your similar job. And so two of the girls that I went to basic with both got sent to Iraq. One of them lived. The other one died. Mm. She got hit by a motor around a uh, mortar around um, on base waiting for the chow truck. Wow. Yeah. And she was like super cool, super cool person. <sighs> yeah. So sad. So sad. You know, life, human life is uh you know, treated so low when you're in the military, you know, he's just, you're no longer an individual, you know, you, you are part of the, of the collective, you are, you are to be sacrificed, you know, to the, to the altar of statism. And, uh, yeah, it's amazing that people really, really believe that what they're doing in, in the Middle East is spreading freedom. Like, what? <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> Spreading freedom by going yeah. over, going overseas and invading other people's territories and kicking down their doors and, you know, harassing them like, that's freedom. <laughs> yeah, I know it is crazy. And then, and then they come home and then they do it to the their own citizens. <laughs> yeah, or, or <laughs> let uh, me teach you how free you are, slave. Yeah, or, or they or they come home and and they can't get a job, they can't assimilate, and they they just like are you know destitute on the streets and and uh you know trying to grovel for uh for government medical care which is um you know almost um you know absent pretty much absent <laughs> you know it's not, not not even there so <clears throat> so after after you you serve your time as a uh as a, as cannon fodder as as a as an attack dog you come home and you're just forgotten you're a forgotten piece of meat that's it <clears throat> so yeah, yeah, it's 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 really amazing, but um, but uh, awesome. So, um, is there anything else that you wanted to say before we before we wrap up, Alma? Uh, well, I guess just check out our uh, new YouTube channel, Selling Bangering. We do have a promo video up, but we haven't released our first video yet, which will uh, show you how we found our boat and some of the boats that we went through before we found our boat, and then our second episode. Um, will be so our first our first episode will be how we found our boat and it'll cover our first sale and then our second episode will be uh, following that so um i actually haven't started that one yet but i'm still working on the first one uh but it's almost done and it should be out soon maybe it'll be out by the time i get to anarchapoco awesome awesome so so yeah so re- reiterate the uh the, the the links and page websites again how people can find you and contact you so fi- you can find me on Facebook, Alma Sommer, S-O-M-M-E-R, and uh, you can find our BitNation Poco event on Facebook, and we have a selling bangering page as well, and a BitNation Borderless Tour event if you want to uh, just pay attention to what we're doing. Um, and of course, I do have some other pages, the Undocumented Human Project, which will cover anybody um, that is an undocumented human and you have a story to tell, I will promote that for you. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're looking for a job as an agorist, you can go to Agorist Marketplace and that's a group on Facebook and you can get an agorist job instead of a slave job. So there you go. Ah, very cool. <clears throat> I'm sure yeah, definitely, definitely <laughs> a lot of anarchists would be attracted to that. Um, yeah, really cool. So, so uh, actually, real quick before before we go, why uh, why did you why did you call your page Sailing Bangarang? Just curious. Well, Bangarang is a term that first came out in the movie Hook. I guess that's what it says on uh, Urban Dictionary, and it basically means to cause a ruckus. So <laughs> I like that. Perfect. <laughs> We used to cause ruckuses on our on land. Now <laughs> we can't we can't leave the leave the sea out of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I definitely want to plan a uh, a seasteading event like Jackalope in the future. So if you do, you know, get yourself on a sailboat and or already are out there on a sailboat or other kind of water, you know, home. Uh, 
definitely get in contact with me and I would love to create an event uh, or many events, future events all over the world. So cool. Yeah, definitely. Wow. So, all right. So we'll, we'll get all those links in the, in the description below so people can, uh, can contact you and, uh, you know, be a part of your journey. So awesome. Almost great talking to you again. Thanks a lot for coming on. Um, so this is um, Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network and thuseasyliberty.com and theconsciousresistance.com. Wishing all of you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more of it, please feel free to donate and help me interview other fascinating people. You can do so through Patreon. That's patreon.com slash peacefulanarchism to help me out. A dollar a show is all I ask. If you feel so inclined to donate more, please feel free. It will only assist me in spreading the message of freedom and volunteerism that much farther and that much more efficiently. You can also donate to my Bitcoin. My Bitcoin address is in the description to my videos as well as on my website, peacefulanarchism.com. And while you're on my site, there's a donate button to donate through PayPal. If you prefer to donate through PayPal, you can do so with that. But Patreon is a little bit easier for content creators as you can set up a recurring donation if you so desire. Also, while you're on my website, peacefulanarchism.com, please feel free to sign up, enter your email address, sign up for my newsletter, and you'll receive updates every time I post something, a video or an interview. I do not send out any spam. Or you can also follow me on Facebook under facebook.com slash peaceful anarchism or facebook.com slash Danilo Cuellar 3, I believe. Danilo Cuellar 3. So either, either one of those methods, if you are able to donate, I would be most appreciative. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a magnificent day. Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government control 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com.